Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Lightworker Series, where you get to be the light. I'm so thrilled to have not only um, is she a friend of mine, but she's an amazing light worker, Ines Martin. And Ines is originally from Portugal. She she's the owner of Ines Martin's Design, an interior design firm based in Miami, known for its luxurious interiors that are modern and tranquil. Ines is the creator of the concept, the art of living in harmony. She works on every she works on very selective projects with a focus on design with intention allowing good energy to flow in every space. She believes in new ways of curating a home with harmony and balance, working with emotions, producing a high impact of positive energy into the lives of her clients. Ines believes our outer world is a re reflection of our inner world. To fully embrace and attract the life we desire, our surroundings must align with our vision. Welcome Ines, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you, thank you for the invitation and for being a light worker yourself and uh, creating this platform for all of us to share, to share some beautiful tips to the world, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so when I met Ines, I got to tell everybody, when I met Ines, I took, um, it was in that beautiful home where I have all those amazing pictures that were taken by our friend Magda, the photographer. Mm -hmm. And I know that so many times people ask me, you know, who took your pictures? Um, they're great pictures and the place that Ines had created, that space that she created for us to not only embrace the beauty, but to feel beautiful in the space was so magical. And so I, have, I had to have her on this program to show and teach all of you how she uses her magic, but more than anything, how she uses the intention of who she is and what she wants in her product. It, it shows and not only does it show but you can feel it when you're in the space so so Ines is a light worker and um can you tell us Ines in your words what a light worker means to you well I believe a light worker is I believe we all are light workers right uh one way or the other um I believe a light worker can just be someone that uh, crosses your path and just needs one hand and and by you just sharing your light just by you being there giving giving sharing some love and being there for that person perhaps that person just needs one a hand to get out or or someone else that um, let's say are not in such a great situation and, um, and 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 you can really share your wisdom so i've been i've been um helping some people uh that crosses my path just by sharing a little bit of my wisdom and just by uh, listening to what are they going through. And sometimes it's just like one little detail that brightens our room. Um, and anybody can really be a light worker. Let's just say someone crossing, crossing the street and needs a hand, just be that person, just be that um, to cross the head, to cross with, with, to cross the street with that person really to, um, uh, like even a stranger or anybody else really can can make that impact yeah thank you for that Ines um, can you share with our wonderful audience how you share your light in the work that you do yes um, so everybody knows me as an interior you light up you light up just by the way you light up as okay yes I could do this That's beautiful. <laughs> sorry I interrupted but just had to add that Thank you. Um, so, so yeah, so I started in the interior design uh, industry and I understood that, you know, people are coming inside my spaces and they were feeling, they were having these feelings of peace and tranquility. And then I understood by working with my clients, that's really what they needed. And then I, I started to do a little research and Really in this world right now, that's all we need. We need that space to come home, to feel that it's our sacred space, to feel that we are at home, like closed doors to the world, that we can rest and, and tranquil and, and, and create some peace in our minds. So I felt that was a connection with the space and, and how we feel emotions. Um, so I, I kind of blended into one, um, creating a sacred space in your own home so you can relax, but also 
a space where you can feel in peace within yourself, right? Um, so that that combination really allows you to live in more harmony and more, uh, um, so you, that you can be more creative as well. Because a lot of the times we we are so creative, we are you know uh, light beings that are very creative. But a lot of the times we live in this very cluttered place, right? Very um, uh, cluttered outside and inside as well in our mind, and. We get inside of the house, our home, and all we see is like, you know, maybe maybe things are out of place, maybe things are messy, and automatically and consciously you will feel that way. You walk inside your home and you will feel like you are not in peace. So we already have way too much noise outside of uh, in our lives, right? We get off the, our our house and we get into the, our jobs. Um, inside our car, the traffic. So we are all, we spend a day of being overwhelmed with life and then we come home and then sometimes we have that clutter. So there's not a time that we feel in peace and relax. So that's what I create. I, I try and create places that we can really come home and feel and feel that peace inside. Uh, working with emotions, working with design with intention and and, uh, and I've created lately a concept, the art of living in harmony, which is really that combining both worlds, combining the the peace inside of the home and the peace within. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Wow, you talk about it and my heart gets filled with this, this power and energy of love. And you're right, Ines, you know, when I was doing family therapy, psychology, psychotherapy with families and individuals, one of the first questions that I would ask them is if there were a child, right? I would ask them, tell me about your room. What does your room look like? Or adults, you know, for me, it's so important to know how they keep what's on around them because that is a very good indication how they're doing in here and how they're doing in here. If they're all filled with clutter and they're hoarding and they're holding on to too many things or they're, you know, sometimes they would describe that you can't even walk in their house because there's boxes or newspapers or things everywhere, you know, I knew the kind of help that I could give them because the first thing we had to teach them was to declutter. Yeah. And so I love that you're using that in your program because I know that a lot of times, you know, we'll go to a designer or interior designer or decorator and they're looking at the facade, right? They're looking at the external. They're looking at, you know, let's help build something that looks pretty, but we can look beautiful outside and inside we're crumbling. So I love that you have created that in your, in your program and to use the word harmony. I mean, just, I mean, that in itself creates a space of, of, of peace. Yeah. Um, can you tell me and explain to the audience how you interpret the, like the intention. When you say we, you decorate with intention and you create a space with intention, help them understand what that even means. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> about the, uh, the, the interior designer really making the space pretty. So we go beyond that, right? We go, we remove the makeup and we make the person feel that it's their own home. Designing with attention is, uh, let's just say, let's create a beautiful space, but every single piece that is in the space will have an intention. Intention. Um, the art, the pieces of art you choose for your walls. What do they, what do they represent? Uh, because I, before I even start my work, I, I have an interview with a client. I ask them what is their, uh, what is their intention? What do they want to bring into their life? What do they want to attract into their life? And so, if they say, "I want a happy family," or "I want, I want to attract the love of my life." Right, and so the pieces of art that we will choose for the room will have will have um, will have that kind of emotion into the piece, and nice. perhaps having a um, an art that combines a a couple or a pair of things instead of having a piece of art that is only a single person in the in the art. And I've seen, and this has this happens very often. <laughs> this happens that I go into a client's home because uh, now I have this service where I just do a consultation. I go to a client's home and I analyze what do they have and I see beyond yeah. the aesthetics, right? 
And so they say, I want to attract the partner of my life. And then I look into the walls and I see this um, beautiful single ballerine, but she's sad. She's like showing and expressing sadness in her face and looking down and it's a black and white photo and she's alone and she only has for example, one flower in her hand. So all that indicates of a single, single, uh, single person, single flower, single, single, single. What are you transmitting to the world? Because we are, we attract, we attract everything we say by, by, by speaking, by doing, by living. We are attracting um, our reality, right? And so, and so, look around in in your home. Um, for example, have if you use flowers, just have them as pairs and never a single flower. Oh. Um, if you want to attract more, um, let's say more uh, a tranquil environment for your family to be more tranquil, perhaps you have kids that are very, uh, you know, have a lot of energy. So mm -hmm. what you want to do is using more calm, relaxing, neutral colors. Nice. To neutralize a space right. instead of having so many pops of colors, right? Yes. That is, that is, it is not wrong. However, it is not the emotion you want to attract. So designing with intention, having the intention of bringing a more calm environment to the space by using neutral colors, by using softer, softer mm -hmm. fabrics, mm -hmm. uh, and, and by by having an environment that is more uh, cozy so people can stay longer, right? Uh, if it's a space that it's just a, it's a commercial space and you don't want people to stay as long, you, you, will, you, <laughs> you will use different, different aspects, different materials, different, um, different colors. So all that has a meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. So that is designing with intention. I love it. I love it. It's almost like the space has its own personality at that point. Like the space begins to take its own soul. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is so powerful. Yes. But that is always, that is always according to whoever lives in the space. Right. It doesn't really matter if I right. come in and do a beautiful space. If the person that lives inside Let's just say the space is really calm, really beautiful, but the person living inside has all these emotional problems. And we all know, and, and you, you, know, you work with your, your clients, you know that it doesn't matter how beautiful is the outside, like the makeup, right? We put all this beautiful makeup, but inside we are crying or we are going through some emotional crisis. So yes. we need to work inside as well as the outside. And as I say, the inside is a reflection. The yes. outside is a reflection of the inside and vice versa, right? Yes. So combining both worlds, I believe it's, I, I felt like the, there's a big need out there for people yes. to look within and, and really calm down their, their, their day, have a minute in their day for them to either meditate or really just be with themselves alone so they can understand what's going inside and yeah. you know, they can understand all this uh, emotional uh we, you know we go through all this yes. uh emotional roller coaster right yes. so that's really important and and i really love your your type of work because of that because you go right into i've, I've worked with you before uh instead we had private sessions and you went straight on, you know, the feeling and, and what I was going through. So it's like direct work. And, and I felt amazing after our session. So I just want to tell everybody that how amazing you are as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ines. Yeah, but you know what, Ines, like, like you just said, the person has to be open, right, to... to and that's something that that's really one of the reasons why I did set up this program of the light workers, because like you said, at the beginning of the program, I want everybody just as you do. I want everybody to know that we all have this energy to be a light worker and that we are light workers. It's just really creating an awareness that we're here to help and to extend a hand. And sometimes we don't even know that something that, that I could say or that you can say is exactly what that person needed to hear that day to begin a shift in their life. Yeah. So there's such an impact when we share and we get to extend through our work as a light worker and 
you know, I know that moms are light workers. I know that wives and, and husbands are light workers. I know that everybody has the capacity to be that. And so, so many times, like you said earlier, we're so caught up in the noise that we're not allowing ourselves to just be in that genuine, beautiful place that we are and the space and creating that around us so that we can continue to share our light with the world. Everybody is, everybody has it and everybody has the capacity. We're not doing anything different than anybody out there. We're creating the awareness so that you can take a look and say, well, yeah, you know what, when I spoke to someone, so I gave her this advice and, and she was so grateful, right? You share your light when you do things like that because you're giving the best self of you to somebody else who needs a hand that day. Yeah. So I love the work that you're doing. I love this. I also, I've been in this, especially lately, the more, um, the best way that I can help and serve others uh, mm -hmm. is by inspiration, by being an inspiration. And a lot of the times I get people come to me and they ask like, how did you start? How, what do you do? And, and how can, how can, how can I also help? Um, and sometimes it's not so much about like helping as in here you are, I'm going to help you. I'm going to throw all my information into you because like you said, if someone is not open and is not aware of what's going on, it doesn't matter how much you talk to them. It will not get into them. It will not, it will not make sense. Um, and so I understood that lately, um, just by being an inspiration, just by being me exactly who I am, yes. no one else just by doing the things that makes that makes that makes me feel like joy mm -hmm. uh, that's when i feel like more, most people feel inspired they come to me and they're like oh my god i saw you doing this or saw you doing that and before i i was you know on this uh starting my business and i wanted to be very successful because i'm uh I am very uh, passionate about what I do, but I just, I was looking at success as in, let me reach more. And, and I was trying hard and I will work hard. Yeah. And, and sometimes I'll be like, okay, when is this taking off? When is, when is people getting to know about my work and how can I help more people? But really when I started to relax and be more me and remove that makeup, right? Remove that. This is who I am. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, some people will not um, be in your path and you will not um, perhaps connect with what you say and it's okay. But then you will attract your tribe. You will attract the people that yes. will need the most. So just be you. Being you is enough. Being you is, is everything actually. is more than enough. It's being everything. And, and everyone has that perfect spot in this universe. Perfect lights in this universe because the universe will not be as uh, harmonious without you yes. and without me right now so yeah. just being us exactly who we are yeah well thank you for that that's you're you're absolutely right that's such a beautiful message for for our audience and i love that when you say that you know just be you is also just be the light right we we all have light we came into this world with the desires to do something huge or something beautiful or to make an impact. And we didn't have to be an astronaut or we didn't have to be a, a police officer or a fireman or a doctor, right? We could just be who we are. And from that authentic place, people will gravitate to us because they want more of the energy that we are projecting. But also when we're putting it out, we're teaching, right? That it's possible. It's possible for you, Ines. It was possible for me. And we each have a story, you know, it's, 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 um, it didn't come, it didn't just all of a sudden, we didn't just fall into this and say, oh, okay, I'm going to be a light worker. It didn't work like that. As a matter of fact, it was something that took work and it took a lot of effort for us to be able to, excuse me, <laughs> I'm on a video, thank you. Um, so we, um, so what we want is to be able to share from that place that they understand that it took work, that it wasn't something that just happened and it wasn't something that just um, fell into this place, that it was something that we've gone through situations or we've gone through a journey to help us to become strong and to really peel off all those layers to come to this place where we can be authentic. It was something that just, you know, we didn't just land here. Yeah. So can yeah. you share with our audience, Ines, just a little bit about your story and how you got to be who you are today, this fabulous 
person that you are today? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, um, so there was a lot, um, definitely a lot that I that took me here. Right, a lot that had happened for me to be here, and 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 I definitely understand now that we all must go through something which we call. Um, drama or situations in our life that are so hard, but it will it will have it will mold us so we can learn to be here now. Yeah. Because my word of the word that I, that I use for my work is harmony, harmony and joy right now. And and every everybody that comes to me and sees me, they always define me as harmony and joy and this was some words that I picked a couple of years ago that I really loved and connected with them it didn't mean that I was that back then now I can I wake up and I I thrive towards those words because those are my goals harmony and joy but in order to be in harmony I really had had I needed to calm down my thoughts I needed to be uh, okay with where I am and and yeah. and be grateful for everything that I have it yeah. didn't it, it was not like that a few years ago I went through a lot of things I I had a fight in my own mind and I, I there was a oof, it, it it seemed like there was a uh, a war between <laughs> the two sides of my brain and I, 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 rec I recognize that a lot of people feel like that way. At least people come to me and they're like, how can I stop my mind? And, yeah, I try and meditate and I can't, right? So this is a work that um, has been progressively uh, done through many years. Um, but uh, yeah, so as you, as you know, I came from Portugal. I lived in, in UK for five years. And I was always very curious about uh, why are we here? Like, really like what what's what's our purpose why are we here so that led me that without being so conscious about it that led me into coming to united states and uh i i fall in love with this uh, american guy he was amazing and then really i thought i was going to leave that american dream right that where everybody uh has big goals big dreams and i had a good life and i kept thriving into getting more and reaching more and being more in love, getting this beautiful home, getting this nice car, living in this amazing city as Miami that, you know, I'm very grateful for, but really th things didn't go as well. Uh, that took me in, in a path of um, having problems in my marriage, mm -hmm. having, having to, to do two works uh, day and night, working so hard for the things that I wanted. My parents needed help back home financially back then. Well, just now Portugal is getting out of this crisis, but back then there was a lot of um, uh, problems financially. So there was a lot of things that kept my mind um, out of peace. Yeah. And I really thought I was the victim. I thought I was the victim of my own circumstances. And I, I thought, um, why is all this happening to me? Yeah, and I remember thinking, like, I'm, I'm such a nice person. Like, I try to help the world. I try to help my parents. I help my, my, my ex-husband. Why is going on? Why all this? And I attracted this um, people that were against me. And I felt like I was the victim. I was the victim. And then I, I started my business. Um, uh, I opened up my my interior design business, and I, I I loved going to these conferences, this women empowerment. And there was a day that, that I went to this event, and the, the speaker on stage started talking about working from passion and really like um, lighting up that that passion inside of you. And I was like, "What do you mean working from passion? You know, I work to pay my bills, I work to <laughs> help my parents, help my my ex husband, do yeah. all this, help the world." Like I'm exhausted from helping. What do you mean working from passion? Wow. But that really light up a, a, a light bulb in me. And, and I thought, yes, if I'm not happy in here, yeah. how can I be in peace? How can I be? So that's, I started my, my spiritual journey. I was always very curious. So one thing would attract another. And then this other person will attract someone else into my life. And then slowly yeah. I started to meditate. 
Nice. Really meditating is the number one thing that people can do. Mm -hmm. Meditating, just, just a couple of minutes to start with, mm -hmm. will open up a little space in, in this confusion, in this cloud what, that we have inside of our mind, opening up a little space, a little gap, mm -hmm. that little gap without thoughts, that would be a, a blank mind for a few minutes, will allow some ideas to come in. Yes. It will allow some peace to come in. Yes. And so you must cultivate that. That was, the, I took a few years in doing that. And, and I've learned a lot from people like you, like yourself, from, from other healers, from a little bit here and there. I started to learn why, why are we here? And yeah. what is our purpose, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I understood that it was really, that the tick was really being, being curious, being always yeah. curious and dropping the expectations, right? And, yes. and what, what's, what's out there? What's for me? What's for me? And only now I am doing my, not even when I started my business becoming an interior designer, mm -hmm. because when I started my business, I only had the success in mind. I really want to be successful, make right. money. And I know I can, because I have all this power and I can, and yes. I know the law of attraction. Yes. But is this really my purpose? Is this being successful and just being out there? No, my purpose is, it's, I can still be successful, but also um, share with the world my wisdom and, and bring everybody with me, not just me on top of the mountain, but like bring everybody with me because that is the ego. The ego makes you be right. successful alone, alone and on top of the mountain. And that's, the world is full of that. And we don't need more of that, right? No. So you can still be on top of the mountain. You can still attract all the abundance and all everything that you want, financially abundance, financially love. Yeah. And you can still live in a beautiful home, be spiritual and live in a beautiful home, but bring everybody with you, right? Create the awareness around you, bring everybody. So that's, that's really like my way of lighting up this world and, and being, being a, a, a light seed that I can help. That's so beautiful, Ines. I would have you here for another two or three hours because <laughs> you're really, your, your story is so inspiring. And I know that our listeners and, and viewers are going to love this interview and getting to know you and knowing about you. And you're right. Um, I feel for me it was very similar when, when I was in the ego or I was in the physical world and I, and I was so stuck in just the facade and being that physical individual. I was missing out on the spiritual connection. Making the spiritual connection, even when I was a psychotherapist, made all the difference in the world because that's what clients were in search of. That's what people are looking for. They're in the physical world and they're struggling. And a lot of times it's because we have lost our connection to spirit and God and source and the light and the universe and all the things that can help us step into that purpose and step into our light. So I loved having you here today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to share with all of you guys the links so how you can connect to Ines. You can have a chat with Ines. You can get to know all about Ines. Um, thank you so much for being a light worker. Thank you so much for being the light and sharing your light with us today. Um, it's been a gift to have you here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this beautiful time with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all for watching and for listening and for sharing more than anything for sharing, because many times the message may not be for you or may not resonate for you, but it will resonate with somebody that you know. So remember sharing is as important as watching it and taking it in for yourselves. So thank you again for all the magic. Have a beautiful day. Too. Bye. Bye. -bye.